Hello, good morning. I am back with Lena um, for day three. Say hi, Lena. For, um, yes, day three of 10 things you need to know before you get your puppy. And um, I sort of smushed two and three together. So two was where to get a puppy. And then three is where not to get a puppy. So they're kind of closely to, like related together. And you'll notice that, yes, I went over like what you want to sort of look to avoid um, in the video yesterday. Um, so today I'm going to focus more on um, how to spot um, what you don't want. So you um, want to get a puppy that um, is, you know, has been rescued. So somebody that is, um, you know, getting a fresh start to life. That is a great place to get a puppy. Um, but you don't want to um, get a puppy um, from somebody who is breeding them irresponsibly um, or, you know, making money off of them. We don't want to encourage people to breed dogs um, who aren't really in it for the right reasons in the long haul and doing all of the things. So that's really tricky because of course you see a puppy is cute and you want it um, whether you think that you're rescuing it um, you know it's better with you than somebody else or you know you're not sure what's going to happen if you say no so it's really tricky but we don't want to reward people for producing dogs irresponsibly um, and you purchasing the puppy is the reward for that so yeah if they can get money from it then they're going to keep doing it. And if you're doing it poorly, you, know, you don't have to spend necessarily all that much money to get your dog knocked up and then sell the puppies um, for a few hundred bucks each. Some people are probably trying to get closer to a thousand or two, especially if they've got Shih Tzus or something like that. People will pay more for them. So yes, we want to make sure that we are not getting puppies from irresponsible sources. Um, we all make mistakes. So if you got a puppy from Petland in the past, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much time dwelling on the past, but please try to do better in the future because that's, you know, part of the machine that is causing all of the unwanted dogs and the you know, high euthanasia rates in shelters. Shelters and rescues are flooded. They are overflowing with dogs. They always have been. It's even worse. It just always gets even worse every year, even worse. So yes, we want to get puppies from loving breeders who spend the time and do the genetic testing and are doing everything right so that it's worth the price tag. And we want to avoid getting puppies from irresponsible places. So how do you spot an irresponsible place? Any website with pictures of puppies where you can like pick the puppy, that's a puppy mill or backyard breeder. So don't do that. Breeders can have websites. Maybe they have some pictures of the litter. They'll like describe mom and dad and talk a bit about their breeding program, but they're not going to have a page where they put up each individual puppy and have the price on it because that takes too much time. They've got socialization to do and training. So that's a red flag. Um, we don't want to get a puppy from any storefront. Um, no responsible breeder is going to give their puppy to somebody else and say, stick them in a store and sell them. No responsible breeder is doing that. Any puppy sold out of a storefront comes from an irresponsible breeder, probably a puppy mill. Um, and they're not getting genetic testing done, so they are not worth two or three thousand dollars. Um, where else don't we want to get puppies? So, oops litters, you know, your neighbor. Um, you know, decided to have a litter, um, or yeah, there's an oops litter. Um, maybe they just wanted, they love their dog so much. They wanted to have one litter and keep one of the puppies. Um, please don't do that. I know it's tempting, but there are a lot of puppies out there and dogs out there. Um, so yeah, I generally, uh, you know, advise against doing that. Um, but as far as the quality of the puppy, um, that is a way to get a fairly inexpensive puppy. So if you know the person and like they've admitted that they screwed up, it was an accident or they told you this is just going to be a one-time thing and you trust them, then I'm okay with doing that. But show some caution. Um, I have a client actually who has a wonderful Doberman and these people, I, I don't remember if it was intentional or accidental, 
Um, but once, I think it was an accident, but once they realized that their mistake, they were like, all right, I'm going to own up to it and I'm going to do it right. They did whoo, all of the right things, um, got them on the high quality food and learned about like puppy culture and doing all of the puppy raising things. So um, that can be a viable option, but it needs to be someone you know directly or like if it's a friend of a friend, you need to like really sit down with them and make sure that, um, yeah, they aren't a backyard breeder trying to pump out puppies for profit because that happens and we don't want to reward those people for doing that. So yes, we went over online, don't do that. Um, in a storefront, don't do that. Um, anybody in a parking lot selling, giving away puppies, if they're giving them away, then I would consider that like a rescue situation. You can do that, but if you're giving them any amount of money, um, let's say over a hundred, um, that's, uh, that's sketchy. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Again, I know that you want to save the puppy, but when you take the puppy and you give them cash, you reward the jerks for doing it. And, you know, even if it's subconsciously they think, oh, I could do this again. Yeah. If I get 200 per puppy and it's eight puppies, that's a thousand dollars. And, um, yeah, we don't want that. So do your best to stand strong. Even if you see a cute puppy, um, don't, <laughs> don't reward these horrible people who are yeah, breeding for profit. I mean, a breeder is also making a, some money. If it's their livelihood, then I'm all for that. Breeders are worth their weight in platinum. I have said, but avoid giving money to shady people who are not treating dogs properly. Okay. <clears throat> so yes, look for backyard breeders. I think a lot of times people get sucked into backyard breeders, um, and they pay high prices. So you go to pet land and a puppy's $3,000, which is stupid and ridiculous. Don't go to pet land. Um, but sometimes somebody has a litter in their backyard and you think, oh, they're a breeder. Um, yeah. And they do it out of their home. So that's nice. You know, they aren't a puppy mill. So I'll give them $3,000. Um, the reason that a puppy would be that expensive, normally even reputable breeders aren't charging that much for their puppies. So, but the reason that a puppy would cost that much, because I do know people who have expensive dogs because they are genetically superior, which is the point of buying a purebred, well-bred dog. You want the stereotypical poodle, you want the intelligence, you want the, um, health you want them to not have eye issues. Their elbows aren't going to um, break down as they get older. They're not going to get hip dysplasia. Um, they have a wonderful, sweet temperament. They have been socialized early, so they aren't fearful. They're a confident dog. So that's the reason you go to a reputable breeder. You get exactly what you want, and what you want is to breed standard and is basically they should be perfect. They should be trained early on. Um, they have health genetic testing. So health testing is just like the puppy's healthy, take them. Genetic testing means that mom and dad were over two years old. So they were fully mature and developed. They had all of the OFA tests run. So you can see through their bloodline, how long each of the parents lived. So, you know, the longevity is there. Um, you can see how many of the dogs in the family line died of cancer or had heart failure, that sort of thing. So you're really proving that this puppy is worth it. They're not going to, you know, barring an accident, like their genetics are sound. So that's why you pay more. So you know that you're not getting into a lemon. And I know it's hard thinking about animals and cars, but yeah, if you buy a car and the engine falls out, you get mad and there are lemon laws and states now have puppy lemon laws to make sure that people aren't giving you, you know, genetically defunct puppies that it's sad because they're living creatures, but uh, yeah, they didn't grow right because the mom wasn't fed high quality food. And, um, yeah, she and her mate, um, turns out they both have the same 
genetic condition and now all the puppies are wonky. And you know that's the farthest from what we want. We want a healthy population. We want superior genes. We want predictability in what the dog is going to be like. So especially, you know, if you want a working dog, if you want to compete in agility or bite work, or if you want to have a seeing eye dog or a service dog, you need a dog that's predictable genetically, that's going to be healthy and live a long time. So that is why we look for reputable breeders. That's why we avoid buying puppies online in parking lots, meeting a, a breeder anywhere um, to exchange the dog. Don't do that. Even if they live eight hours away, 12 hours away, you need to drive all the way there. Otherwise, they might be a puppy mill or a backyard breeder and you wouldn't know. So drive all the way to the facility, scope it out. And if you get there and realize that you screwed up, you didn't do your homework well enough and it is a puppy mill, leave without the puppy. That's what you got to do so that we can put these puppy mill jerks out of business. Okay. This was a super downer video. My bad about that. We're going to pick up tomorrow with, um, knowing basic grooming and care costs for puppies. So also not the happiest of videos talking more about money and how expensive puppies are and all of their maintenance requirements. But, um, yes, things that you need to consider before you get a puppy and before you choose where to get a puppy and what breed you want and all of that. So yes, if you're on the fence, this should be a really educational series for you. I'm not trying to tell anybody not to get a puppy. I'm telling you though, put some thought into it. Of course, um, everyone should, but unfortunately a lot of people don't. I have a lot of clients that get a puppy and then call me going, ah, crap, I got a puppy. And then a couple days later, they're like, yeah, I returned it to the breeder or yeah, I surrendered it. I gave it to a friend, whatever. So try to make sure that puppies are thoughtfully chosen and stay in their homes and you know what you're getting into. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.